This webinar addresses two MathCAD capabilities that draw strong and contradictory responses from many audiences. The adults who are finished with school will probably say, if I had this when I was in school, it would have been a lot more fun. Conversely, the students who sit in classrooms all day long will likely say, my math teacher wouldn't want me to use this. Based on my experiences, the probability of each of these responses is about 0.8. So let's dive in. MathCAD is excellent computer algebra symbolics capability. CAS is fairly common these days. TI graphing calculators possess CAS, Mathematica and Maple do it well, Wolfram Alpha makes it available for free in a browser, and there are definitely phone apps for CAS. So MathCAD is one among many choices. Why choose MathCAD then? In my view, MathCAD offers CAS in an easy to use computational document format. Computer algebra symbolics is the capability to perform symbolic algebra and calculus using commands that manipulate expressions and equations using the properties of algebra. In MathCAD, a symbolic evaluation symbol is used to evaluate equations and expressions by using CAS functions. Symbolic evaluation is one of MathCAD's two evaluation symbols, the other being numeric evaluation. Different symbols for evaluation seems like it might be a bother, but in real life, we often make the same choice between a numeric or arithmetic answer and a symbolic or algebraic one. When working on a computer, we require different symbols for these choices. Here are some simple examples of CAS using MathCAD Prime symbolic evaluation capabilities. If I want to evaluate 1 7th plus 12 23rd, if I use MathCAD symbolic evaluation capability, the result is returned as a fraction. If I go up and I insert a square root operator and I take the square root of 27 and I evaluate that symbolically I'll get the result 3 times the square root of 3. Now moving into algebra if I have an equation like 5x minus 19 and I want to express that as an equation so I'm going to use the equal to comparison operator I say that's equal to 100 I can evaluate that symbolically but then ask MathCAD to solve it for x and it'll tell me what the result is. I can take an expression like 2 times the quantity x minus 3 and then I want that raised to the second power so I'll insert an exponent and then I will evaluate it symbolically but ask for it to be expanded. MathCAD will produce the quadratic polynomial. Finally I can take a value like x squared and I can say let's set that equal to 49 and again I can go up and evaluate symbolically and solve for x and MathCAD will give me both results, 7 and negative 7. Note that the first two here are arithmetic expressions, and the final three demonstrate how a keyword can be used to request a specific algebraic procedure. When we're doing symbolic evaluation in MathCAD, MathCAD has a symbolic engine called MuPad that generates these results. And what MuPad does essentially is apply an algorithm to interpret the expression and then rewrite it in an equivalent form. Let's take a look at the symbolics palette on MathCAD's math menu. MathCAD symbolics are developed by a group with PhDs in applied mathematics. And I can honestly say I've had the occasion to use very few of these functions. For high school students, solve, expand, factor, and simplify form a really useful toolkit. And I'll highlight these commands in today's webinar. In order to move forward quickly, I'm going to use a well-known algebra example to show how CAS works in a MathCAD worksheet. The quadratic formula is one of the most commonly taught topics in the whole curriculum. So I figured that it would be relevant to everyone. MathCAD makes it extremely easy to work with a formula such as the quadratic. It is possible to use a single symbolic evaluation to define a function that will accept the three coefficients of a quadratic polynomial as parameters and output the two roots of the polynomial as results. And I'm going to show you how to do this now. We're going to start with a general equation for a parabola. In order to do that, I'm going to use the equal to operator and I'm going to call my function q of x for quadratic and I'm going to use the standard form a times x squared plus b times x plus c. Because I've not yet defined a, b, or c, I've created this as an equation rather than defining q of x. At this point, what I'm trying to do is describe the context that follows. Note, however, that in MathCAD, c is already defined defined as a constant, the speed of light. Right? At present, A and B are not defined. Ultimately, we're going to redefine C here, so we're not going to use that value of the speed of light. The purpose of the quadratic formula generally is to identify the values of x when the graph of Q of x crosses the x-axis. And we usually call these the roots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, I'm solving the problem where Q of x is equal to or is the same as 0. So I'm going to use the equal to operator again. And now I'm going to substitute. So I'm going to say, I want this expression. I'm going to take that, and I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to say, when that is the same as 0, and now I'm going to go up to Symbolics, and I'm going to choose the Solve keyword. 
Now I'm going to tell it to solve for one of the four variables that are there. I'm going to ask it to solve for x. And when I click out of that region, I get two results. MathCAD presents the results in the matrix because there are going to be two roots. So what it's giving us here is basically an equivalent form of the quadratic equation. As I said, MathCAD's solution here for x is an equivalent form of the quadratic formula. And since a, b, and c are not defined, MathCAD has used its symbolic capabilities to express the result in terms of the variables a, b, and c. We can now use this to find the x-intercepts or the roots of any parabola, and I'm going to show this in two different ways. First, we can simply define a, b, and c above this symbolic evaluation in the worksheet. So for example, I'll take a relatively straightforward quadratic with a as 1, b as 2, and c as 1. And you notice as I'm typing that in, MathCAD is simplifying the expression step by step until we get to the results minus 1 and minus 1. Now, once I have these created, I can change the results. And every time I make a change, MathCAD will be finding the roots of your different polynomial. If we want MathCAD to include the function itself above the definition of the roots, there's an easy way to do this. I can express uh, lowercase q of x and say that that is going to be the same as our expression ax squared plus bx plus c. And if I simply evaluate that, it'll substitute a, b, and c into the expression. And so now I can see both the polynomial and the roots of the polynomial. This little section of worksheet is a useful calculator. We can add some text. So I could go in here and I can right click to insert a text box and I can type change a comma b comma and c to be the coefficients of the quadratic equation. And I'll expand that and fix my typos. And I can go down here, add a line, insert a text box and say Here's the equation, and say one more text box, the roots are. And if I want, I can highlight all three of those, go to formatting, and I can add a little color. Now it is also possible to take this one step further and create a function that takes the coefficients a, b, and c as inputs, and then outputs the results. To create this function, I'll start with a definition operator. So I'm going to go to math, operators, definition. And on the left side, I'm going to type a name for the function q roots, and I'm going to list a, b, and c as parameters to that function. Now, I'm going to click over on the right side, and then I'm going to go up, and I'm going to take my solve expression, copy that, go down here, and paste it. And when I click out of the region, I no longer have the numerical result, I have the symbolic result. And the reason for that is a, b, and c are now parameters inside of this function. So basically a, b, and c are local variables. Now I have a function called q roots that I can call anywhere in my worksheet. So I can type q roots 1, 6, 9, and I can evaluate that. And I can evaluate the roots of a quadratic that has coefficients 1, 2, and 3. And then I get imaginary results. As this example shows, Using MathCAD's CAS capabilities is pretty easy. You're working in a document where you can use text to describe things. All the symbolics commands are available on a palette that makes it easy to choose them. And you're applying those commands essentially to standard math notation. So as you express yourself and as you use computer algebra symbolics to solve problems, pretty much you're documenting and explaining your work at the same time, which is a really powerful feature. Symbolic solutions are great when they're possible. It turns out that in the real world, when designing windmills or robots or cell phones, problems are often messy and symbolic solutions are not possible. Consequently, engineers often have to rely on numerical methods. And there are engineers that specialize in numerical methods and often program their own techniques for solving problems. For the non-specialist, MathCAD has an easy-to-use tool for solving problems. Go to the math ribbon. We have a type of region called a solve block. And when I insert a solve block, what I get is a structure for setting up a system of equations and solving that system. In order to illustrate this, so we'll start with a simple system of linear equations. Let's say that Kelsey is riding her bike at 4.4 meters per second. I'm going to add some input parameters. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to add a page for the moment so I can type in my parameters. And let's call Kelsey speed V sub K and we're going to assign that the value 4.4 meters per second. And according to the problem here, Kelsey's going to have a 20 meter lead over her sister, Bethany, but Bethany is traveling at 7 meters per second. So we'll define V sub B as 7 meters per second. So now I have two speeds 
and Kelsey has a 20 meter lead on her sister when they're passing a lamppost. So as they pass the lamppost, Kelsey's distance from the lamppost is zero, but Bethany's distance, d sub b, is minus 20 meters. So now I have my input parameter and I can remove that space and now I have my equations. So I'll go there and I'll add a page to give myself some space. My equations are going to describe the position as a function of x time and Kelsey's position, y sub k, capital K, as a function of x is going to be v sub k times x plus d sub k. And Bethany's position, y sub b, as a function of x, is going to be defined as v sub b times x plus her distance at the start of the problem. And what we want to know is when does y sub k of x, when is that the same? So I'm going to use equal to, when is that the same as y sub b of x? Now I can remove my space and bring that up. A good way to look at this problem is going to be to plot these two functions. So I'm going to go down to plots and I'm going to add a page so that I can create my plot. And I'm going to start by defining my variable x time. x is going to be defined, x colon to define that. And I'm going to go to vector and matrix and I'm going to insert a step range because I want to give x a range of values from 0 seconds. The next value in my list I want to be 1 second and the final value 10 seconds. And with that defined, I can go up to plots, insert a plot, and choose an xy plot. And now x is going to appear on the x-axis. And I'm going to insert two traces here. I'm going to insert y sub b of x, and that's going to be Bethany's path. And then I'm going to go up to the plots ribbon and add a trace. And then I'm going to add y sub k of x. And we can see on our plot that we've got a solution where Kelsey catches up to Bethany at approximately 8 seconds. And here's where the solve block comes in. This to be a relatively simple context in which to use a solve block. Okay, I used up my whole page here, so instead of removing all the space, I'm actually going to add a page break. I go down to my solution, and a solve block has three subregions, guess values. In this case, my guess is going to come from the plot. I'm going to guess that the solution occurs at about eight seconds. And my constraint, I've actually listed my constraint up here, so I'm going to copy that. I'm going to control click on that region. I'm going to go to the math tab, copy that, and then I'm going to go back down to my solve block, and in constraints, I'm going to click paste, and I'll drag that over. There's my constraint, and now I need a solver. And what I want to do in this case is find x, and we don't really know perhaps what the solving functions are that are available. So I'm going to go to the functions tab and go to solving and click on solving. And there's actually a command called find that returns the values of the variables that it's given as arguments that solve a system of equations in the solve block. So we've expressed our system. I'm going to choose find. I'm going to type x and I only have the one variable in this case. So I can delete the other parameters and then I'll evaluate that and it'll tell me the solution. x is 7.692 seconds which makes sense when I look at my plot. So now I have I've used the numeric solver here to determine the exact value for x when Bethany will catch up to Kelsey. Now that we've seen a simple example of a solve block using a problem from an Algebra 1 course, let's make it a little bit more challenging and look at an engineering maximization problem. In the first webinar in this series, I showed how to create a worksheet that calculated the volume of a trapezoidal prism. This is the worksheet that I created. The context for the example was the design of a ventilation hood. I'd begun the worksheet by creating a simple sketch in Creo, making a screen capture of that design geometry, and then inserting it into the MathCAD worksheet, and then use that image to create the calculations. Now, I've got my original worksheet back. It's been reviewed and there's a design change request. The request says maintain the current surface area and revise the design such that the area of the top is one-third the area of the bottom and maximize the volume under these constraints. Looking at what I've calculated so far, the first thing I need to do is calculate the surface area of the ventilation hood so that I can use that as a constraint. The top and the bottom of the design are open, so I need to calculate the surface area of the four sides. Unfortunately, two of the sides are rectangles with an unknown measurement as one of the edges. Fortunately, the other two sides are isosceles trapezoids and I can use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the length of the unknown side of the trapezoid. Because I can dissect my trapezoid into a rectangle with congruent right triangles on each side, I can use h as one leg of a right triangle and one half the difference between base 1 and base 2 is the length of the other leg. And I'm going to use these expressions in a definition that calculates L, the length of a side of the trapezoid. Once I know the length of this side, I can then calculate the surface area of the existing design and establish a surface area constraint in my solve block. The other constraint will be will set the area of the top of the hood equal to one third of the area of the bottom of the hood.
In the design change request, I'm asked to maximize the volume. When I look under the solving, MathCAD has a maximize solver. So I'll be able to use this function in my solve block. When I hover over it on the ribbon, I see that I need to list the function to be maximized as a parameter, along with the variables that I want to solve for. So I need to define a volume function before I set up my solve block. I've calculated volume already in my worksheet, but I haven't defined it as a function. So what I need to do now is I need to go down below and I need to define volume in terms of base 1, base 2, little h, and big H. I'm going to create a function vol and I'm going to pass it the parameters base 1, base 2, little h, and big H. And then I'm going to define my function. And the volume is going to be little h divided by 2 times the sum of base 1 and base 2, that's the area of the trapezoid, times big H. So now I have a volume function that I can maximize and I can use in my solve block. I've now got a handle on my constraints, my function, and my variables, so I can set up my solve block to maximize volume. So I'm going to click on the worksheet, and I'm going to go up to the Math tab, and I'm going to insert a solve block. The first section are the guess values, and I'm going to assume that my initial design is not far off from the eventual solution. So I can go up, and I can use control to click on each of those four definitions and then I'm going to copy and paste those in as my guess values. Once I've got those in my worksheet I can begin to work on my constraints. The first constraint is keeping the surface area constant. The surface area then has to be equal to the initial value and I can express that using an equal to operator. What I'm going to do is go into the constraints, choose an equal to operator and this expression has to remain equal to this value, copying and pasting using the hotkeys. So now I have my first constraint. My second constraint is going to be that the area of the bottom to the area of the top is going to be a ratio of 3 to 1. So I'm also going to be able to express this using an equal to operator. So I'll click down here. I'll insert another equal to operator. And I'm going to say that base 1 times the height divided by 3 has to be the same as base 2 times the height. Those are my constraints. You can see how my solve block is putting the equations in the constraint region and the definitions, the guess values in the guess value region and extending those automatically. And now I need to go down to my solver. I chose a solver already. I'm going to go to functions, go to solving, and choose maximize. And I want to maximize function vol for all four variables, base 1, base 2, little h, and big H. And then I can evaluate that, and MathCAD very quickly gives me a result, which I can convert to centimeters. And I get new values for each of those variables. You can see they're not so far off from the existing values. What I like to do in a case like this now is turn this into a definition. So I'm going to go to the beginning of a line and hit colon, and I'm going to use M as the variable name. And now each of those values I can then access in my worksheet. M sub 0 using a matrix index is going to be 2.625 meters or 262.468 centimeters and that's going to be my new base one. Ultimately what I'm trying to accomplish here is figure out what design changes that I need to make and then I'm going to go back to Creo and make those changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to express the changes in these dimensions. So let me copy that and format it, underline it, I'm going to express the changes in the dimensions. And what I really want to know is what's the difference between M0 and base 1, and that's going to be an increase of 12 centimeters. And then for M sub 1, which is going to be base 2, I want to figure out what that difference is. And we're going to be decreasing base 2. So we're changing the shape of our trapezoid, then the height of the trapezoid, M2 minus H, is going to be increasing and the height of the prism, matrix index 3, minus big H, oh, that's also going to be decreasing. So I'm making these changes, and I can now use my volume function to calculate the new volume. I can say volume new, and I can assign that. I now have a function vol, and I can send all four parameters to that, M0, M1, M2. These are all the values from my solve block, and M3. And I get my new result. It's currently in uh, liters. Maybe I want that in cubic feet. So I'll express that in cubic feet. So I have my new volume, and I can use that then. I can find the difference between volume new and the existing volume calculated at the top of the worksheet. And I can see that in this particular case, I'll actually be increasing my volume just slightly through maximization and changing the dimensions of my ventilation hood.